Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Weekly Allowance, where today we have a very special Christmas episode. And how can you tell it's a Christmas episode? Because I put Christmas stuff up, and also it's almost Christmas, and that's about it. Today we'll be looking at the most festive of creatures, an evil goat man. This is a new release from Mezco, well I say new, uh, it's new-ish. We got ours kind of late. Like, a lot of other people got theirs before we got ours. I'm not making a fuss about it. I'm just saying, if we'd gotten it sooner, I would have reviewed it sooner. Probably. Maybe. But as it stands, we are reviewing it right before Christmas, and I thought that we'd get a little festive with it. So I was very excited about this guy. I love the uh, black evil goat trope. This guy looks pretty cool. The artwork on this is awesome because you've got this modern artwork right here, but in the back you've got these really compelling engravings from the 1800s. This is called The Destruction of Leviathan by um, Gustav Doré. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And the, <laughs> the only reason I know that is because I'm really uh, into sea creatures and sea creature lore and stuff like that. I'll forget what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I'll remember sea creature lore that does not matter or benefit anyone ever in the world. But yeah, really cool artwork throughout. I love the back where it's him in some kind of gothic manner and then those engravings are just what's going on on the outside. <laughs> like just chaos right outside his manor. You can see in the shadow here he's got more of a bird face and that is a reference to one of the alternate heads he comes with. Yeah, just really cool uh, packaging. If you checked in with us last time you know that I have lost my trusty razor blade of rustiness. So... Hopefully there's nothing in here I'll need to razor blade open. So this guy's meant to be kind of a foil to Atticus Doom, who we have in his variant version right here. And he was teased a long time ago, and I was very excited back then, and I'm very excited now. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present. So festive. Oh! A Christmas present where pieces... Uh, fall down. Alright, so this setup isn't ideal because this is pretty cushiony and he keeps wanting to fall over because of it. But, I'm committed to the bit. It's Christmas. I'm going to keep this stuff up. So we're just going to hold on to his little body. One of the things I had noticed in promo pictures and the promo video and stuff is that his head is so shiny. Like, not even just this head, but the alternate heads. And, yeah, it's pretty shiny. Not as shiny as I thought, but I think it should be more matte. I like my goat men to be matte, you know, but it is a very nice head sculpt. It's not just a goat. You can tell that this is some kind of human creature goat hybrid thingy. It's got a lot of menace to it. Like if you saw this head on a normal goat just hanging out, you'd know something was up with that goat. It's got cute little ears though. He's mostly black as you can see, but the high gloss on the horns and the eyes kind of make those stand out a little bit more, which is nice. You got some high gloss on his little fingies too. And his fingers are done very interestingly. They're not human hands. They're not hooves. They're like a, um, a compromise between the two. You've got these nails, but they aren't traditional nails. They're kind of more like hoof sheaths on the fingers. Very dapper rings on this hand. I like it when a figure has like rings or some kind of decoration on one hand and not the other, because then I can easily tell which hand belongs on which part of the body. You'd think that uh, the thumbs would be enough to give that away, but I have I have difficulties. Very dapper old-timey shoes as well, and I want you to look at the bottom. The bottoms have these cool rivets in them, and not only that, they're worn. Looks like he's been uh, running around quite a bit. He doesn't have a tail. That would have been very cute, but he does not have one. I'm always wanting my uh, animal people action figures to have tails, but they rarely do. I like that his stockings are sewn onto his pants, so they're just part of the pants instead of going up under the pants. That'll make it so uh, they do not get lost, nothing gets bunched up. I was a little worried about that. Man, why don't we dress like this anymore? I would dress like this for sure, but I'm not a presumably wealthy goat man. I'm going to be very gentle with him because I've been having problems with um, the new Cosmic Legion line breaking stuff. Now he's handless, but just want to remove this coat to see uh, kind of more of what he can do. It takes a little finagling to get it off. I don't really like to remove outer clothing and stuff from these because it's a hassle to get them back on and I, <laughs> I don't know, I just like the whole look. I don't typically care about seeing them, what they look like underneath like the jackets or whatever. Maybe that makes me a bad toy YouTuber, but that's just my preference. So let's put his fingies back on gently, because I will cry if I break him. 
Most of the Mezcos we get belong to Patrick. I mean, I say we're a team, you know. What's his is mine, and what's mine is his, presumably. But this one, this one, I really love. He is probably going to come live with me in my office. He looks a little more dainty without the uh, coat on. It looks a little bit like a, uh, a goat schoolboy. And I'm, I'm here for that. Mainly, I just wanted to get unobstructed uh, articulation. Nice neck movement, head movement. Oh, you can get all sorts of movement out of him. And the great thing is you can grasp his horns and make him move. I like that. He's got a built-in handle. Let's see, he's very thin. Got some twist and some crunch. The feet are a little weird because these stockings go right into this joint down here, so it's kind of hard to get movement on the feet, but it can be done. But of course, as always with Mezco stuff, like the articulation is pretty good, but you want to be careful not to stress the fabric because the fabric itself is very thin, the seams are very small, but you can get a lot of movement out of him, a lot of personality. He's very expressive. Speaking of expressive, he will come with two alternate head portraits and they're kind of hard to see. He's just like so dark. You've got this angry like attack battle face and look his little ears are even back. Oh that's so cute. I'm sure he's not meant to be cute but <laughs> I don't know. Got a cute little row of teeth down here. No teeth up here because goats do not have uh, front upper teeth. They have like a, a pad kind of up there instead of front teeth and his is appropriately black just like the rest of him. He's also got this really cute laughing face. I don't <laughs> I don't know he's just adorable to me. Like if you know me you know I'm bound to ascribe cuteness to things that aren't typically cute but I think this guy has a lot of personality and can be viewed as cute. I mean my favorite villain ever is Bill Cipher. Tell me he's not adorable. He's his little triangle. This guy kind of reminds me of him. Just a fun-loving ne'er-do-well who will rearrange all the holes on your face. He also comes with plenty of hands. Pointing hand, relaxed hand, grasping hand. And they're very small. I'm, I'm sorry that my hands are covering up his hands, but that's, that's just how it goes. Ringed grasping hand. This is probably like a power using hand or something. And another relaxed hand. Before I get into the several other accessories, I'm going to show you my favorite one. And the reason that this set just like was pushed over the edge into legendary territory for me. Snail bag! Oh my god. It's a bag. It's a snail. It's a snail bag. I never knew I needed this until I saw it. I wanted this Bartholomew Vex so bad that I just ordered it without <laughs> like looking to see all the stuff it came with because I was afraid it was gonna sell out immediately. It didn't. I don't know why, people kind of slept on this one for a while, I think, but after we ordered it, I looked at the stuff it came with, and it came with snail bag, and I love snail bag, okay? I won't be judged for it. Now all we need is Doc Nocturnal's frog butler. I would be friends with this guy just because he has a snail bag, and sure, it probably wouldn't end well for me, but I would get to meet snail bag. So snail bag is definitely going to be living in my office with Bartholomew Vex. He's also got a heap of other things, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So this is the beggar's paw, and it looks very scary, honestly. There's eyeballs on it. Magical powers abound, I'm sure. Goblet and wine, and slash or poison. The wine is in a translucent bottle. Looks really cool. The red stick, not sure what this does, but it looks like it's made of entrails, and I find that highly disturbing. The sacred scalpel, which also has an eye on it. A lot of eye motifs going on. But that's not all, because he also comes with this entire second clamshell. It's already got dog fur on it. Would you believe me if I told you that these Christmas decorations have been in a box for years? untouched by any dog or man. And that this sweater I'm wearing has also been in a box for like mm, two years, untouched by dog or man. But all of a sudden I just take these things out and they're just like covered with scout fur. I don't know how she does it. So as always you get a very cool base. So shiny. That red against the shiny black looks so good. So of course it's got this peg in it. You can just peg his foot into that or you could knock that out and attach this uh, stand. So let's just do that because he will not stand up on my festive Christmas tree skirt. Ooh, it's a little tight, huh? It's a little tight. Yeah, he should want to 
peg in on there, but the hole I think is too small for this peg. So his little foot might need to be heated up, or we'll just go with the stand. I don't prefer the stand though. So those other goat heads weren't the only extra heads he came with. He also comes with a vulture head, also looking very shiny. I don't know why this guy is so shiny. This one in particular I think I'd want to take like a matte spray or something too, except for the eyes of course, maybe except for the beak. Uh, I much prefer the goat head just because it's cuter, I know. I know, that's a stupid reason. What can I say? But in addition, he also comes with this transforming vulture head. So he is attacking with it or turning into something else entirely, just kind of mid-morph, very gnarly. Those will also come with an alternate neck, so he's not stuck with that black goat neck. He also gets a ruff for the vulture head and this transforming uh, gross hand. You can see that it's the, what hand is that? Left hand is the one his rings are on, so it's the left hand. Very gross. I mean, it makes sense because Atticus Doom is kind of gross too. I mean, he's got like an exposed brain under his turban. We've also got some effects. We've got the Eldritch Eye. So it seems that um, Bartholomew Vex is using the same kind of uh, font of power that Atticus Doom is using. You know, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting if Bartholomew Vex was the font that Atticus is using. Like, the powers come from him. That would make their antagonistic relationship uh, even more interesting. This is called the Black Flame, which is funny because it's more like pink. But there's some black in there. And the horns of Hothka. I don't know who Hothka is, but uh, he, she, they, or it sound pretty cool. And this looks pretty cool. I do love that purple translucent effect. Very neat accessories. Nothing beats slug bag though. So the horns of Hothka effect can fit into this hand through tension. But what's cool is that it also has a magnet in. And so it can stick right on top of his little head. So either way you want to do it, this eye effect is the same way. Right on the head, or in the hand. And this black flame goes on this uh, creepy ass wand. It definitely looks less creepy with the flame because it covers up that weird like entrail bulge, which is not something I had ever wanted to say. And uh, the cool thing about all the accessories is that a lot of them can be put in snail bag. So now I'm going to um, replace his head with this vulture head and I'm not looking forward to it because to be honest I love the goat head so much I don't want to do this but it's it's for you it's all for you guys mostly I'm just afraid of like being able to get it back on okay his neck and his head came off in one piece that's good like magic he's a bird person I mean that looks pretty cool too I also thought there'd be a dissonance between the vulture head and like the black hands, but I don't think so. I think that still works. The ruff is a little uh, springy. It kind of wants to move around, but I don't find that to be a problem. But yeah, the goat head is just like superior. <laughs> I mean, I guess it'd be cool to have two of these and like have them fight Atticus Doom, one with a goat head and one with a vulture head, but we only got the one, but you don't need two, two figures. That's silly. But then I could have had two snail bags, one for my display and one to just like carry with me. I wasn't using my brain when I only ordered one of these. But yeah, of course you got the same kind of movement on that too. Very nice articulation, lots of personality. And then pop that off and put on this transforming head. Very disturbing. Ugh. Yeah, I don't care for that. It looks awesome. It'd be good for an attack scene, but personally I am here for goat head, goat head all the way. And I don't think the vulture head has a magnet in it, so it can't attached to these effects. All right, let's get the superior head back on. Gently. Okay, good. I was afraid that all this messing around with the heads and necks and stuff was going to kind of mess up his collar and his ascot, but that was fairly easy. Nothing got stuck. So here he is next to Atticus Doom. He's quite a bit taller than Atticus, which was not something I was expecting, but I guess it makes sense. Atticus is more Doc Nocturnal size, and we all know that Doc Nocturnal is kind of a smaller guy. Here he is with the Four Horsemen Studios Figura Obscura Santa, or Father Christmas. Stop committing eldritch horrors. He's not gonna. And here he is next to the Four Horsemen Studios Figura Obscura Krampus. Oh, they could be friends. Krampus versus Vex, who wins? I mean, 
Krampus looks scarier, but Vex, I think, has um, a lot more going on magically. And here he is with another black goat icon, Black Philip from The Witch. I'm not really into Funko Pops at all. There are some that I like, and this Black Philip is one of them. It's mostly the animal characters that I like. So yeah, Black Phillip and uh, Bartholomew Vex, best friends. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. We still have one more figure in our Cosmic Legion's Grave Night Wave to look at, but I thought that I would just review this figure before that one because it seemed more Christmassy somehow. I mean, in some parts of the world, goats are celebrated as a Christmas animal, right? Also, I just had to get to Snail Bag. I love him so much. So as always, likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. Comments are more than welcome. I'll see you guys on the next one, and happy holidays.